Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series on the types of sampling. This will either be the first video in the series or the only videos in the series depending on the time. Thanks to Vicki Borlaug for the use of her PowerPoints to make this video. We will talk about the following types of samples in this video. Simple random samples which will be a review since I have covered this in a previous PowerPoint slash video on simple random samples. We will also cover systematic samples, stratified samples, and cluster samples. Beginning with a review of simple random samples. We will look at this population of people and a simple random sample of size n equals 4. One way to create such a sample using the TI-84 calculator is step number one, number the members of the population. Remember the order in which you do so is not important. It is the fact that every member of the population must be numbered. Step number two, because the population has 15 members, use the calculator command random integer 1 comma 15. 15 because there are 15 members in the population. Then we'll press enter until you have four different numbers since we need a sample size of four, ignoring any repeats. In Ms. Borlaug's example here on the right, notice that the four repeated and she did an extra enter to get four different numbers. Step three, we circle our selections, circling four, seven, eleven, and fifteen. Remember it is a simple random sample because each sample size of 4 is possible from this group of 15 and it has an equal chance of being selected. Here is an example for you to try. Pause the video here to try it on your own or to check and see if you have the PDF file for this. On to systematic samples. A systematic sample is a sample that is found by employing some kind of system to do so. Think about the word systematic and system. It follows a pattern or what math people like to call an algorithm, a formula or a rule. Let's look at the process for picking a systematic sample. Systematic sample every kth person or member of the population. Number of number the members of the population is the first step. The second step, randomly select one of the first k members. Third step, select every kth member from the member selected in step number two. In this case, it'll be much easier to demonstrate than just to say. So let's see if we can make sense of what I just said. Step number one, number the members of the population. We have some people here. Let's number them. We have 28 men. Step number two, randomly select one of the first four members. Four members because we want to choose every fourth member of the population. So out of these first four we need to randomly select one. So we'll use the calculator random integer one comma four and use that command to randomly select one. When Miss Borlaug did this she ended up selecting person number three. If you do this at home, you could, of course, get a different answer. Step number three. 
select every fourth member from the member that we have selected in step number two. This is our member, so if we want to count every fourth member from this person. One, two, three, four, and select person number seven. Count four jumps again. One, two, three, four people from our population and select the 11th person. One, two, three, four more, and the 15th person. Add four more to 15, and we get the 19th person. Add four more to 19, we get the 23rd person. Add four more to 23, and we get the 27th member of our population. And that is a systematic sample of every fourth member. Look at this situation. Filling bottles. A filler with five heads rotates and fills the bottles as they go down a production line. Head number four is defective and gives a low fill. The goal is to get a representative sample. What's wrong with using a systematic sampling here? Well, a systematic sample may give us only bottles that are low or none of the bottles that are low or underfilled. If we do every fifth bottle, we could pick the first one and then five bottles later and get the sixth one, and five bottles later and get the sixth one, which will also be underfilled. The same thing would happen if we picked bottle number two and then bottle number seven, and we would get none of the bottles that are overfilled. So you have to be careful in setting up your systematic sampling, and they're not always the best depending on your situation. Here is an exercise for you to try for yourself. Pause the video here if you would like to try it. And to keep from having a video that's 15 to 20 minutes long, I think I will stop here and do this in two parts. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about systematic and simple random samples.